the Greater Centerville Historians, organized in the year 2000. The purpose of the organization is to preserve the history of the Township of Centerville, Cleveland and surrounding area. Gerald O'Neill, Charlie Bauer, Richard Wiegand, and myself, Kathleen Sixel, were the founding members. In 1831, the territory south of Green Bay was sold to the U.S. government by the Native Americans who had title to the land. The consideration was the promise of a reservation in another state. The Township of Centerville was established in 1850. The township had a village called Centerville. The reason for the hamlet's original name of Centerville was, in the days of the Indians, there was a trail along Lake Michigan between Manitowoc and Sheboygan. This heavenly spot was exactly at the halfway mark, so the early white man gave it the name Centerville. In 1849, the village of Centerville was surveyed and laid out in lots and blocks. The village of Centerville was renamed Heike when the postmaster general informed the village leaders that another Centerville was located in the state. When it became time for Centerville to be renamed, a judge in Manitowoc by the name of Albert Schmidt would take kids hiking. The judge said, you can't call a town hiking, so why not make it Heike? Thus, the village of Centerville became Heike. In the early years, Centerville had the vision of becoming a lake port. To encourage ships to dock there, two piers were built into Lake Michigan. Many German immigrants arrived by schooners and the village began to grow. The village had a brick factory, stores, schools, a Lutheran and a Catholic church, mill, saloons, blacksmith shop, and a fire department, and a brewery. When the brewery was built, the settlement began to flourish, but when fire destroyed the brewery, the largest industry, there was no longer a need for the harbor facilities. So ended this chapter of the development of Heike. Two miles west of Heike, another settlement known as St. Wendell began to grow. It had a Catholic church, a general store with a connected dance hall, and a post office was also located in the complex, a funeral parlor, and at one time a motel. With the clearing of the forest, tilling of the land began. This prompted the exporting of lumber and grains. The farmers of Centerville looked forward to the building of a railway since they had a serious problem transporting their products. In 1873, the Milwaukee, Lakeshore, and Western Railroad was built between the settlements of Heike and St. Wendell and was named Centerville Station. In 1880, Centerville Station was renamed Cleveland after President Rover Cleveland. Cleveland, at that point in time, owes its growth to the fact that the township of Centerville was a rich farming community and farmers from miles around would bring products to be shipped by rail or ship. The village of Cleveland had several grocery stores, a furniture store, a funeral parlor, several saloons, Lutheran church, hardware stores, several gas stations, newspaper, photographer studio, several car dealerships, cheese factory, several feed mills, livestock yard and lumber yards. The biggest business was the Cleveland Co-op, which offered many types of services. With the feeling of green crops, the farmers began dairy farming. With the abundance of milk, another industry began, cheese and butter making. Local cheese factories dotted the countryside. One-room schools were usually built near the cheese factories, so children would have a ride to school when farmers brought their milk. In 1958, Heike, St. Wendell, and Cleveland incorporated into the village of Cleveland. In 1968, the Cleveland Elementary School was built. The township of Centerville has seen many farming changes, but dairy farming is still the primary vocation. Today, Cleveland is known as the seat of Lakeshore Technical College, which offers an educational alternative to four-year colleges. An ancient proverb states, 
When an old person dies, a library burns to the ground. These words were the inspiration for organizing the Greater Centerville Historians. We hope to preserve as many memories as possible. different part of the county at this moment and uh, Mr. Charlie Barr will straighten us out what we're all up to today, today being April 22nd. It's a cool windy day but Mr. Bauer is here to direct some information. Go right ahead please. Uh, yes, first of all, who do we got operating the camera this morning? <laughs> Jerry O'Neill. There you go Jerry, I'm glad you put your name on the tape finally. <laughs> today we're going we're on, to we're gonna check out a historical site in the town of Mimi. And we're standing at this intersection here. And down there where the camera is looking, where you see that little uh, protection there, there's a creek that goes under there. And years ago, it was called Mimi River. OK. Or Pigeon River. Pigeon River? Pigeon River. All right. And we're going to see where this takes us today. And uh, we have another intersection down here we're going to check out. And, and then we're going to go over by Henry Langenhan in section 10. Okay. And there's a historical site there. And as the as the day goes on, we're gonna kind of develop the story here. And uh, we're gonna talk to a couple of people and, and actually go down to the site and get a visit there and probably check some old documents and some old photographs and that. But this is our starting point right here this morning. Okay. And again, we're gonna be following that Pigeon River. Is that correct? Pigeon River. Right? And the farm in back of you, do you happen to know the owner at this point or at all? The, the farmer that we're looking at, where the camera's looking at is Alois. Reister. Alloys Reister? Yes. Okay, very good. Well, we'll get in the vehicle and we'll start moving to the south, right? South. We're oh, going south. We're yes. going south. Thank you very much, Charlie. Sure. We're just passing Mimi Creek Road, which is a north, I'm sorry, east-west road. And it's a dead end, according to Mr. Charlie Bauer. And we're still on the route here of the Pigeon River, Pigeon Creek. Uh, heading toward the Colway Mill, original uh, mill that was uh, burnt down many years ago. And this is looking west down the Mimi Creek Road. And according to Charlie, he said it's a dead end. We're at a farm at more or less the end of Mimi Creek Road. And Mr. Barr will have the name that we can put on the tape and he's going down to the west portion of the road here which is really coming to an end and there's a creek there and there's some indications that the wooden bridge of some kind was there and he will give us more information so I'm going down to discuss this with him a little bit more and like I say the road the pavement ends right at this farm yard driveway and he delivered mail down here, which was his turnaround point. Hey, Mr. Bauer is uh, able to give us more information, which I just sort of roughed over, but he'll fi finalize it in detail a little bit better. Go right ahead, please. Yes, Jerry. Um, we're standing at the very western end of Mimi Creek Road. And I'm familiar with this area because I was a rule carry on this particular area out here, so I know all the ins and outs and the back roads in it. And this house in the back here and this whole farmland in here belonged to a Harvey Yonko. Okay. And he lived here for many years. He's since passed on. Could you spell that last name? I hate to put that one no, on you. No, I can't. <laughs> I Yon I can't. Yonko, I don't Yonko, know. Yonko, no. <laughs> and I shouldn't know how to spell it, but if I see it, I can tell you whether it's spelled right or wrong. Okay. <laughs> and right down down behind his house here, yes. west of his house here, is where uh, the Mimi, uh, the Pigeon River comes through there. Okay. And we're going to take a walk down in there. And, and you can see how large it is today. Of course, in the last two days, we had about an inch and a half worth of rain here. Yes. But everything from this particular road here, as, as the old trail goes all the way up west, up and over the hill there, there was another residence way back there on the south side of the road. Okay. And I believe later on, the, the Fritzy uh, Krauss will indicate 
what was going on back in that area there. All right. And the aerial maps, the plat maps that I've been looking at, from this particular bridge and this road south, as you, as you go from this bridge south up the County X, this whole creek here was enlarged into the mill pond. All right. Once the dam was built there, this whole area back in here. That back flooded everything. Back flooded, yes. Okay. And we take a walk down here and you can kind of pan into the creek here before the trees get all their leaves on here yeah. and just catch the size of that, that river running through there. Very good. Very good. We'll go right down there, Charlie. Thank you. Mr. Bauer is uh, going to explain a little bit more about this uh, river. Yes, we're standing on, on the north side now. This, as the camera's looking, we're looking north. So the water is coming from the north. And I believe this particular river starts at Pigeon Lake. OK. That's the source. OK. And it's spring fed all the way through. Really? Yes. OK. Oh. And uh, if we look on the other side here, you can even catch a little bit of the rapids on the other side of the road over there. All right. Very good. And right now there's, uh, was there two large culverts here? Two large culverts, I'm guessing they're both at least six feet in diameter. So they anticipate a lot of water still coming through here? Yes. Okay, yes. very good. And it flows all year. All right. Thank you very much, Charlie. Okay, Mr. Bauer can give us some more information about what we're looking at and which way we're facing. Now we're facing due south, and you can catch the rapids down in there. And I was just looking at all the young trees in here. Yeah. Now back around 1850 or so, I'm, I'm sure none of these trees were here. Right. They, they don't look that old. That's correct. Okay. But it, it'll be interesting once we get up and, and meet the other gentlemen this morning to, to get an aerial shot of what this, this whole uh, mill pond area looked like yeah. From, yeah. from this point on. That's, that's kind of why we're down at this end of it. This okay. should have been the beginning of it. All right. And again, you indicate that the starting uh, is source of it is from Pigeon Lake. From Pigeon Lake, yes. Okay, yes. well, that's our, excellent. So, and also I noticed on the sides that we're down in kind of a pretty, rather deep valley, if yes, you would. Yes, yes. So and this this area could contain a lot of water when it was backed up. Yeah, this, this served as, a, as a, quite a reservoir to, to run the mill. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Charlie. Sure. Okay, we're here on, uh, what highway again is this? This is the town road of Rust, Rust Road. Rust, Rust Road, R-U-S-T. Just like Rust, yes. Okay, <laughs> and we're looking to the northwest, I would northwest. gather. And Charlie wants to point out what we can see, just a rooftop, more or less, but. Yes, I believe what the camera is looking at right now would be the, the Harvey Yonko farm. Which the house and the barn you can see back there. Okay. And we're using that as a reference point, so from that area there, as we come south now, yes. you can see the, the lay of the land there, and if you look west, the, the land is so much higher in the west there. Oh yeah, look at that. And there's like a like a little valley in between there. Sure. And and that is where the the, the mill pond was. Okay. Where All that area we're up. looking at right now that I'm looking west at, is was mill pond then backed up water. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, as, as the camera gets closer to that grove of trees there. Yes. It, there's a stone foundation in there, and that stone foundation was the Colway Grist Mill. All right. And that's our that's our historical adventure for today. We're gonna go down there. We're gonna actually get up and touch the stone. Okay. And we wanna we wanna talk to uh, uh, Henry Langenhahn and, uh, and uh, Fred Krause, and they're gonna explain more about this whole area in here. Okay. And the farm we're looking at now that I panned a little bit further to the south. That would be Henry Langenhans farm. Okay. Yes. And, and you can see the the, the big uh, two-story brick home there. Okay. And uh, I believe that's where we're going to meet. All right. And that is uh, Henry Langenhans home. Uh, I think he's got a newer home just just a little west of there. Okay. But th this, that building there, the home was the original farmstead or the homestead of this particular area here. And I think I'm going to have to let Fred and uh, Henry explain that. Okay. So we get the, so we get it factually correct. Okay, very good. Now I'll just continue panning for just a moment. Sure. And what highway are we going to be intersecting here? We're going to intersect with County X. Okay. And, and that County X was very important to the development of this whole region out here. All right. And uh, I suppose we could go into that thing we're right here. Is and, yes. and we have a map that will show what what I'm speaking of here. If you take X all the way down to Lake Michigan. I was under the understanding 
It's about an eight-mile trip from here. Okay. And it's it's due east. All right. I was under understanding there was just one pier out there. I, right. I found an old plat map, 1872, where it actually shows two piers out there. At the end of X. At the end of X. No kidding. Okay. So. In between 1840 and 1860, when all the German immigrants came here, this was a, the Western Corridor. That oh. The schooners could land there all right. and come this way. And once they, they cleared the land, they got rid of all the trees, they, they sold the lumber. Okay. And they turned it into an agriculture area, basically wheat farming. All right. Very popular. Oh, okay. And this is why the grist mill was built here. Okay. And over the hill, there was, I think in School Hill, there's another mill there. All right. If you go to the south, to Spring Valley, there's another mill there. So this whole area was pretty well noted for, for the area, for milling, because they had access to the lake for the schooners sure. to, to sell their product. Sure. And again, that mill was uh, under the name of what? Uh, August Colway. August Colway. Yes. Okay, very good. Well, I think that'll do it for now, Charlie. We will get more information from the gentleman you mentioned. The experts. Okay, thank you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> on a field driveway, and this is uh, County X going east and west, looking west at this time. And again, the culverts down there indicate the water that was coming from the Pigeon River or Creek. And we're panning past the farmhouse and the farm uh, buildings looking more toward the north now at this time and of course over in the across the I'll call it the lower depression or swamp area was the foundation that remains from the Colway grist mill or uh, grist mill I guess is the right word and we're going to be looking at that and other pictures to correlate everything together here with some other gentlemen providing some more information too. But again, we're standing by County X heading to the west, which would be uh, School Hill would be the next village that would be encountered just over the hill. <laughs> you hate to say that, right? <laughs> Why? But it's so true. <laughs> yeah. Like the driver's license when you give it at street, you know, already too. Boy, I yeah. said to the seven of ladies when they got the glasses, I said, yeah, they should make that a little smaller yeah. yet, you know. <laughs> Did Mr. Colway build this house then? Yeah, the Colways built it. See, see, we had a second house where my heifer shed is there. That's where my dad was born. Huh? We'll get home. Yeah, so, yeah. So. We might do a walk around on the house. Oh, too. yeah, that'd be fine because yeah. everybody likes the architecture. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, it's really neat, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was the wing added on? Not, not the way we think. It, it, the wall goes straight through in there, but, but we don't, you know, it's hard to say. It's uh, all the, the same brick and all the, the same, same, brick, uh, same pattern. Yeah. Same. Okay, I've got uh, three gentlemen here who are going to provide an uh, enormous amount of information today. And uh, we're at a special place, and uh, Mr. Bauer can start us off what we're up to today. Go right ahead, please. I think first we're just going to introduce ourselves. I'm Charlie Bauer, and the guy standing next to me is who? Fred Krause. And next to Fred? He's Henry Langenhardt. Okay, good morning, gentlemen. Glad to have you uh, in, uh, in this area to involve us in some history. And uh, Mr. Bauer will start it out again as to what we're about, please. Yes. First of all, we're about a lot of traffic on this road, Jerry. Yes. But we're standing at the, the original home site of August Henry Colway, and he was the millwright that built this home and the grist mill. Okay. And we're going to probably take some of the house here, but we're going to have Fritz here and Henry explain all about the Colway family and the whole settlement in this area here. Okay. Well, Fritz, I'll uh, let you take over. Go right ahead, please. Okay. Uh, I moved out here from Sheboygan uh, in 1941. My mother married Henry Langenhan. And uh, I did over the years uh, what Henry Langenhan told me, what all took place uh, over, well, in his younger days, and in, including, well, the house, the, the farm, and the mill. Okay. And uh, it's, it was very interesting. Okay. Uh, so I, Henry, if you want to ask okay, me. and uh, 
I was born and raised on this farm. Okay. And we're still farming today. I'm at it now 39 years. Oh, and there you go. Well, wonderful. How many acres do you have here, by the way? Okay. The original farm, what the Cowways had, consisted of uh, 200 acres. Okay. And at the time, uh, Fred Langenhan sold off 40 to Leslie Raider, which is now owned by Krieger Lumber. Okay. And I reduced it again by 10 acres. I sold 10 acres to my son where he built that. All right. So we still have 150 original acres. All right. Okay. But I might want to add here, Jerry, that sure. Henry is the middle Henry. He's the middle Henry. He's okay. He's the middle Henry. And you want to explain that to me, Henry? Okay. My, my dad was Henry W. Langenhan. All right. And he was a bachelor till he was, what, about 50? 50, 56. 56, he got married. Okay. And, uh, I have a sister, Ruth, who's four years older than I am. All right. And uh, now I have also a son named Henry W. again. Okay. <laughs> to keep everybody confused. <laughs> so do we have like a four generation? Is that right? Or am I... Well, it would be um, well, so if you go well, back to your grandfather, right? Yes. Fred, yeah. 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 There, there'd be Fred okay. Langenhan, All right. Henry W. Langenhan, okay. Henry A. Langenhan, and Henry W. Langenhan again. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> so so the, 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 the principal party here that was involved with August Colway was your grandfather. Right. Who was? He married He married a Colway girl. Oh, okay. He oh. married a Colway girl, and, that, and they had... Uh, at that time, no Callaway was interested in running the mill. So that's how the Langenhans came in be, to be involved. So it was your grandfather that got involved with right, the mill. Right, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. And very I, good. I gotta say, Jerry, if the camera's picking up any of the, the building here, it is just gorgeous. It's, yeah, I <laughs> see that. Style. I'm gonna do a little bit. Can you describe a little bit above the window area for a moment, Charlie? Sure, if you're, the camera's looking way up on top there, if, if you look just underneath the gutters, Jerry, you can catch the, the freeze, the, the, the facial board there with all the little arches on. Yeah. You know, and, and the whole house here is a Victorian style. And as you come down, to, you find the, the wide freeze board in the cornish up there. It has brackets that hold the, just as decorations. And okay. in between the brackets, there's a dentil, a row of dentil work up in there. And then- We had to get a different position here and uh, Charlie will continue to explain the, the art of the support brackets up there I'll call them that for lesser right. word here there were just brackets but they weren't actually put up there for support it was just decoration all right and a Victorian house is definitely decorated and in between the brackets is a row of dentil work okay yes and then if you look over the windows yeah it's an arched window and it's got an eyebrow on it where the where oh. brakes stick over the top of it yes I see and that it's, a, it's actually a, a two-layer brick home all right it has a I didn't bring my exact my piece of paper on that would explain it, but on this particular one here, you have a row of sleepers here or shiners, what they call, and then you go up four, one, two, three, four, and then you got another one to tie it in. Okay, I see. This particular method of, of uh, laying up brickwork was called was either called a common bond. Some of them had six in between, some had four in between. Okay. And then again, they had the little drip cap here where the okay. water would splash on and bounce off. All this right. This was quite common. Okay. But the house for its time period was just gorgeously built. Okay. And, and with that, anybody know about what year this was built? Got uh, Mr. Langenhan, Henry by name, and uh, he is going to indicate some uh, ages and years that he can recall. Go right ahead. Okay, the way, the way we figure is about in the yearbook and things that we have is about in the 1850s the house was built okay and our dad once said that they, they built it for the price of twelve hundred dollars for the brick oh so, my so. god <laughs> that was pretty reasonable i would say yes <laughs> and uh, apparently this uh, uh gentleman who built the house they didn't spare the horses they, as they say he he wanted the best is that correct yes uh, the, the callways he wanted to have something a little more exquisite than the average home, and I guess this is it. <laughs> he sure did. He sure did. And how many floors are in here? Or, uh... there, there's only two floors. Okay. But but the ceilings, uh, my mother used to scold about, is that they're about 10 to 12 feet tall. I see <laughs> that, yes. <laughs> and the side of the house that we're on at this present time is what side? 
Is that We're on the south, south side. South side. Of the house. South side. Okay, very good. And uh, did you ever live here at all, or does it? Oh yes, I, I, I was uh, when I was young. I was born and raised. I was not born in the house, but I was raised my whole life in there until I built my home across the driveway. Oh, okay. Until 1973. Okay. And uh, by age-wise, what year were you born? In 1947. Okay. <laughs> Very good. And uh, the uh, mill itself that was associated with this house, and it was built kind of, I'm guessing here now, I haven't been there yet, on the same kind of same order, is that correct? Yes, I would say in the 1850s also, it came through uh, a Witz, previously built a mill. Witz? A, a Witz from Manitowoc, and oh. he only had it about two or three years. Okay. Understand, and he sold it then to the Cowways. Okay, now a Witz, since I worked at Miro Corporation, there was a Witz that was involved with that. That would be the same family in Oh, Manitowoc. the same family. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. And M uh, Mr. Cowie had a lot of prominence in the area here. Okay. And you can see that just by his home here. Yes. You know, and connected with Vitz, an another big name in the, in the in the settling community sure. here. You know. And, sure. Okay. And uh, w with his, even when we went up to um, uh, the cemetery there, his his stone in the cemetery shows that he had prominence just by the size. Oh, yeah. of, you yeah, know, yeah, just yeah, yeah. 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 And, well and, respected in the yeah. community. A anything I read about Millers, they were well thought of. You know, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I just would like. Yes, to, go right ahead, please. Just add, go right ahead. All, every window had shutters. Uh, I mean, there aren't hardly any left anymore. But uh, on the other side, the house there, we do have a, some that are intact yet. Okay, and, great. And right uh, behind us here. Yes, go right ahead. Keep on going, Fritz. Uh, is a huge uh, cistern. Oh, really? It, it held enough water that. Uh, throughout the year, uh, well, I'd say mostly over winter, when you didn't have, I mean, it was cold and, and the water didn't run in off the heat stocks, but uh, that was the soft water that they used for bathing and washing their hair and the ladies and so doing the laundry. And then the laundry, oh yeah. So it, it's still intact yet. There's wow. water in there yet, but we are not using it anymore. I mean, this gentleman thought of everything. He and, really did. And I only had one cistern. There was two. One, oh, one yeah. under the pantry. Okay. For when they cook, uh, cook, they also had a. If you walk over this way. Sure, we'll do that. Oh, you guys can take right off, and I'll catch up with you. This one was filled off of this. They're standing in a different part of the house outer area, and uh, there's some more information to be had here. Right ahead. Okay. The first cistern was over there. Yes. The second cistern was right here where this downspout comes in. Okay. And it was the width of the kitchen. Oh, really? Six to eight feet wide. Okay. And I'd say uh, 20 some feet long. Wow. And that served the pantry so that when they did dishes, yeah. it was a uh, ready supply of water there. Now that was under the building, is under that right? Under the building. Okay, so this one we talked about before was outside right. the building. This is underneath the pantry. Okay, yes. okay. There was a little washroom on the north end of the house here, and, and that had a, a little hand pump, and that was directly into the cistern where, where the water came from. So when they drew water for other purposes, they would get it out of that little room there. Oh, yeah. But it was like nowadays what you'd call maybe a mud room or you know, maybe sure. a place sure. to wash your hands or so. But that's really what they had there. Okay, I got a question since we're talking about uh, this particular area. The uh, rooms that we're standing in front of right now with the lower roof line, uh, what was this part of the house? Uh, that is the kitchen. The kitchen was, was on the west side? Uh, yeah, kitchen and pantry here. The kitchen, go, go right ahead. The kitchen ends right here with these two windows. All right. And the pantry begins here and goes to that corner. Okay, okay, very it's good. It's the full length of the, of the of this side. Oh, really? Oh, wonderful. Okay, so then the, the other was the kitchen uh, area there? Yeah, uh, this, this 
yes. uh, addition, or, or was, well, it's not an addition, it was built with the other part, but, okay. uh, but this lower part here, that's all kitchen. All right, very good. And I see they kept the same throughout the entire perimeter of the house, all this fancy Woodwork. brickwork and... <laughs> the woodwork is just unbelievable. It's now, very time consuming. <laughs> I would say, the material up on top, just for a moment, Charlie, that uh, I call them brackets, but there's maybe another name for that. Was that made of wood? Yeah, they're made out of wood, Jerry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, from their uh, present uh, uh, distinction there, I would say they are made of special wood that didn't do any rotting or deteriorating. Could, could be pine. Could I don't be. know. I, I think it's what you'd have back then would be number one pine. pine. Okay. It, it has very few knots. Uh, oh, okay. Anything apart, uh, the window sills, the, the window frames, Everything was was nice, clear wood. Okay. Now, did we determine who was the builder of this building? That that we have no idea of. Who okay. Built it. All right. But the owner was Colway. The owner was Colway. Yes. Okay. We don't know the contractor. All right. Fritzy well, was talking about some shutters earlier, yes. and yeah. and I might add okay. the shutters weren't decorative. They were functional shutters. Oh really? So in the storm, you could actually close them. Close them. If you move around. On this side, we have a couple pair left. Okay, wonderful. I'll be right there. Thank you. Gentlemen here, uh, Henry will uh, show something here. First, he'll describe what we're looking at. Go right ahead, please. We're looking at the shutters that were on the house. Every window had a pair of shutters like this. Okay. We believe they were made out of cedar. Okay. And, and they have a feature that they were functional, not like they are now decorative. These, these, actually? These, these actually work, that they closed when the storm came. Yes. And uh, you can see they, 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 they fold Oh, they this function up. that way. They, they, the louvers. The, the louvers also work, uh, and, and they have a locking mechanism. Okay, let me get on into that. Okay, there was a cam effect there, is that correct? Yes, a cam effect that when they were closed, they, they latched here. Yeah. And then in the morning, they probably would open them like this. Okay. As they open. Uh, we've uh, talked about the shutters, and we had a change of battery here, but uh, Henry will continue. Go right ahead. We, we wanted to show that the paint on these is probably almost the original paint. Okay. And it was probably lead based that they last this long, but I said they were functional and when you open them, yes. they do fit back they down. They drop into that cam or cam. rock position and, yes. and the wind never pulled them around. Really? There was no wind that grabbed these and No kidding. Them. No, I mean, the no. original shape, they were doweled. You can see the workmanship yeah. was a dowel. See. A dowel effect there. You have holes here and here. So this this piece is is got tended on, and this has got the yeah. mortise. In, so this piece oh, so is dolled in. If you yeah. see My the, God. if you see the end, yes, right here the end. Just one second. Go right ahead, continue, uh, Henry. Uh, uh, mortise. A, yeah, mortise and tenon. Mortise yeah. tenon joint there. Sure enough. The rail here's got the the mortise in, and this piece has got the tenon on yeah. it. It's held in with two, two pins. Two dowels, two pins, yeah. Now, could you oscillate those lures one more time for me? Sure. The, the louvers were also functional. Oh my gosh! In that they look at that. They all work. <laughs> the the time involved just to make the shutters oh, just amazes me. Right. <laughs> just amazes me. And they had no power tools. No. Right. right. Yeah. Will indicate something else. Okay. These, these shutters not only were on this side of the house, they were on the first story. And the upper windows are a smaller window. Okay. They were made also for that size window. All right. And they were really, truly, truly functional. Oh, on this one we have the latch. Okay, here. let's take a look at that too, Henry. There was a latch that when they were in was caught here. This piece is gone. Okay, the bracket there. The bracket, but but this latch is still here today. Okay, for heaven's sake. Located, I believe, on the north side of the home, and which would then lead into the kitchen area. And uh, Fritz has something to say here. Go right ahead. This here was an open porch, but in the winter time, uh, they had it enclosed with this uh, matched lumber here. And uh, it, well, it went all the way along to the other wall. Okay. And uh, most of the time when we took these apart in the spring, we, we took them two at a time, uh, these here boards or these matched lumber here okay and they were stored up through that little hole way up on top there we would push them up oh, okay. and they would 
be uh, put up there for over the summer months. Okay. And one time, once uh, when they put it up in the spring of the year, or I uh, mean when they, they uh, put it up in the fall of the year, you yeah. see that the section up here yeah. was one piece and it was bolted to the side panel. And apparently somebody forgot to put the bolts in. <laughs> and when the grandmother came out one day, she opened the door and uh, came and uh, let loose and came down and I guess it hit her on the head and knocked her out. Oh my goodness. But, but she, uh, she recovered from it okay. <laughs> and then in the spring though, after this was removed, yes. we have big panels of screen that are stored out in another building. Okay. And they would get put right in here so then you had an open porch, oh, so to wonderful. speak. And didn't have no bugs or anything to bother you. Yeah. So that, uh, that worked out quite well. Very good. Could you point out the cement pillar that's in the middle there, please, Fritz? Uh, you made this here? Yeah, that's right there, yeah. Uh, uh, that is a hollow post. A hollow post? Yeah, it's got uh, just boards oh. nailed around in, to make it look like a square post. Oh, okay. Very so good. That's, that's what it is. Okay, very good, Fritz. Thank you. And it came from the cameraman Jerry O'Neill, and in regard to the roof, and could you indicate something there, please? Fred? Okay, the, the roof was wood shingled. Okay. And at the time it was built, there were two chimneys coming out of the high part of the house. Okay. And there was one chimney on the low part here. All right. And my dad, in uh, I guess in the 19 between 1916 and 1930, he put on a slate roof on the house. And it's oh. Still original slate. Really. Yeah, there's wow. nothing, nothing, nothing touches it. Wow. You know? Okay. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, Henry. Okay. It's still on the north side of the home here, of the Callway home, and uh, Fritz will indicate some information. Go right ahead, please. At one point, there was a, a dug well right down in this area. Okay. And it was mortared out with stone. Okay. 20-some feet deep it was, and on top there were planking, and on, on the planking was uh, fastened a well pump with, one the, with a long handle where you uh, pump up and down like that. Yeah. And we used that for many years until one day, once using a white enamel pail, we fill it with water and, and carry it into the pantry. Yes. And then we had a dipper and we, that's how we, we drank our water. Okay. And mother noticed some little things moving around in that water. <laughs> and, well, upon investigating, we took the pump out and we looked and roots from the trees were coming through the stone walls. Ah. And these little, I don't know what kind of bugs they were, but that kind of ended our <laughs> use of the water here. <laughs> but that didn't still end our getting water from outside yet. Okay. On the east southeast corner of the house, in yes. fact, uh, Dad somehow came upon a, a spring, uh, a vein of water that was only down about four feet. Huh. And so they put a pipe in there, and they only had about maybe six to eight inches. If they put it down too far, it wouldn't run. It oh. it up, it would, so it, it was very narrow. <laughs> wow. But we used that for many years. We, we carried the water in with the same white yeah. pail. <laughs> And later on, when uh, we wanted a little better cooling for the milk, yes. we had our cooling tank down uh, on the south side of the house there, and we, we run this pipe in there, and it run day and night, and that was just as nice and cold as you could have it. Isn't that something? Holy man. Very good. Thank you, Fred. Sure. Yeah, we've stepped inside uh, almost into the house, but we stopped on a certain area, and go right ahead. We're, we're in the porch area. And up above me, we have the name of the owner of the house. And this door was built specially that way. Okay. Because years ago, there were no funeral homes. And ah. they had to have a way to bring the casket in and out of the house. So this door is a, a little wider than the average door. Okay. And uh, it was also used then to bring furniture in. And, wow. you know, it was built that way. Oh. It was not added <laughs> later. <laughs> To accommodate. This also uh, was a two-family home. It was built for that. And this was one entrance. And inside uh, of the kitchen, there was a door back in the corner. And that went up to another area. 
Okay. So it, it could be used for, for two families, two families. And, and it was too okay. at, at that time. Okay, and they, apparently they had put some extra windows, which is still there, I believe, right? Yes, the, the windows are all original. Oh, okay. And uh, it was very decorative. I would say. And this led into what part of the house? That was just into the hallway. Into the hallway. hallway. All right. And that's original door and everything? Yeah, original door. Okay, wonderful. And can anybody read exactly what that says up there? You might have to even spell the words a little bit there to it's help e It's either H or A. We're only it, guessing. I, I was always under the impression, if, if I remember right, what Dad used to say, that it was Henry William Colby, but now upon looking into records, there was an August Colby, but we, I, I would say what, I mean, if I remember right, this. Probably it was Henry William Colby. Okay, very good. Thank you. And uh, he's got some information, and we're going to look at a photo here. And you, if you could tell us when that was taken before we take a look. It was, uh, this picture was photographed of our farm in the 1970s. Okay. And as we were in the front of the house here, and then we moved around to the kitchen, and then we did the shutters oh. on the west side of the house. All right. And then we moved around to the north. And now we're inside of the house, and we have this picture. And we, what we want to do is look over at the old mill. We, okay. We always re we refer to it as the old mill. Yes. And this is the kind of the last picture of anything with color that we have of of the walls standing. All right. There's still a pretty well four walls seen, but right where the water came through, All that right. part that part de there deteriorated, and that fell out down in the where the flume was. All right. And as you can see here, the cattails, the water well, sure flowed enough. out towards the creek and joined this part All right. farther down. Okay. So this is, this is the mill. All right. Okay. And uh, if you want to point out your other part of your farm area, that you may do so. Okay. The, the water, the, the creek that supplied the mill yeah. comes through the back of the farm. All right. Right through this area. All right. It was used uh, all the years to water the cattle, and they had uh, the finest milk that way because the spring, there was actually the, the big creek here, the uh -huh. Mimi River it's called, All right. and back here there's more springs, and there was a, what we call the little creek, uh -huh. and that, that flowed and met down here and Holy flowed God. into there, Yeah. and this, this creek flowed all year. It never froze up. This part never freezes. You can, it can be 30 below zero never... and, and she'll steam yeah. and uh, <laughs> she don't freeze. So, okay. so she's well fed with springs. Wonderful. And this is now your present farm? This is our present farm. Okay. The, the barn. My dad added about 36 feet on here uh -huh. from what it was. Okay. And he farmed. This is a, a pig pen here. All right. Back here was the granary. All right. And the silo. And back here were chickens. Okay. And this was the old house we called it where my dad was born in. Oh. Well, okay. this one we believe was being built. Yeah. They, they lived in here. Oh, really? So they had kind of like a little village, oh, you know, okay. with, with two homes. Sure. And then through here they went up through here all to up to the, the mill. Up to the mill. That was a oh, roadway, yeah. as we'll see in some of the older photos sure, we have here. Sure, sure. Okay, I, I just have a question in regard now the water that was backed up by the dam that apparently had to be there. Is that correct? Yes. Now, where was that dam? That was to the, in the picture here, we can't quite see it, but okay. it's, it's to the left. All right. And later on, when we get outside, we'll point that out. Very good. That's all, that's what I need, sir. Okay, well, thank you very much has provided another picture and it was taken a lot earlier. Go right ahead please. This was taken about 15 years before the colored one. In 66 this was taken. You can still see the foundation was in a little better shape. Yes I see that. And could you indicate again where the flu area was? That that, that was on the southeast corner where the water came out. Okay. And there was a, this was not a, a wooden uh, it wasn't driven by a wooden uh, water, wheel. water wheel. 
Okay. Just just add a turbine in there. Right All right. Now. Okay. Very good. Thank you. We're looking at a map here a little bit, and maybe the gentleman I'm with can indicate what we're kind of looking at. Okay. We're looking at the original Cowway farm. It was situated in sections nine and ten. Okay. Now the mill pond, what supplied the water for the mill, yes. was completely owned by the Cowways at the time. All right. No water. Uh, rights were needed because all were owned by the property owner. Oh. Okay, and the mill, and we're, can you show me the north end of the pond and then take us down to the south end? The north end went up to the Mimi Creek Road. All right. And the south end went over to the county trunk X of today. All right. And the route of water that ended up at the mill, where did that go? Do you have something there? Where it went after? Uh, before it went into the mill. It okay. must have had some kind of a, oh. a lead. Uh, oh, okay. Th this part was held in the pond area to the west of the mill, and to the north of the mill was where the water flowed in to give the, wa the water power to the oh, mill. Okay. And we'll go over that a little more finely uh, in more detail when we get there, and it should work out very well. Okay, very good, thank you. We're looking at a very old scrapbook, and it was uh, great that somebody did this. And uh, Henry, maybe you can tell what we're all about here. Okay, this book we believe is from the 1860s, and it shows the house as it was still today. And we show where the, the driveway goes down to the road, now X, and where it goes past the sidewalk, and would go down to the barn. Okay. And then from the barn, it would go back and then over to where the mill would be situated. Okay. And the mill is over to your right there. Okay. Next picture. All the next picture. Okay, next here picture. we go. There we go. And the roadway comes up from the where the Mimi River is. All right. And they took the bags in on the north side. All right. And then the it probably dropped down and the water here is in the bottom, the Mimi River okay. flowing past, yes. and the water is also to the north, what is used to run the mill. Okay, is this the uh, other side, or is that the water outlet? That would be the water where it went, where it got used and comes out on the All southeast right. corner. Okay, very good. To a gentleman again, and he'd like to introduce himself and indicate his uh, lineage a little bit on how he's related to the Colway people. Go right ahead. I'm Fred Krause, and uh, I moved here in 1941 when my mother married Henry Longenhardt. And um, these, what I have here, what, what I'm holding in my hand, are are the recollection what uh, my stepfather told me okay. of uh, where different items were were located in and around the mill pond and the mill itself. All right. And uh, Can you orientate us with the highway that we're presently on at this time? Okay, this this is Highway X that runs right through here. Great. And then uh, 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 the Mimi Creek, yes. which uh, flowed, let's see once here, I, I, I don't quite have it indicated here, but but the dam itself was was right here. Okay. And then the um, uh, let's see what what I have what have I got written here? Dam. Okay. Oh, okay. oh, dam overflow. Okay. Uh, alongside the dam here, yes. th th there was an area so that when the water came up real high, yes. real quick, and they weren't able to get all the uh, gates up fast enough, mm -hmm. the water would flow alongside the dam, so, oh. so it wouldn't wash out. Sure. And then eventually, uh, the water went uh, down through this area here. Mm -hmm. And of course, this here uh, area, they had a boathouse uh, that Dad had mentioned one time, that's mm -hmm. also uh, part of, of the mill pond here. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, just keep going down, and then eventually the water run into what well, I, I always call it the holding pond. All right. And that was right uh, before the mill. Okay. And of course then once it flowed through the mill, 
uh, through the turbine. Mm -hmm. Well, then it went out and crossed uh, into the Mimi River again and mm -hmm. out underneath the highway. And that's how that continued on to its destination. Now, it ended up at Spring right. Valley also? Yes. Is that correct? And at one time, when the dam was dismantled, the water rights were sold to um, uh, Andrew Seipel. Okay. For uh, for one dollar. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that's what happened there. Okay. And and the dam itself drew 24 feet. Oh my God. Uh, where where the wood structure part of it was. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, Let's see, I have here no nope. pond. Oh, it, it, this area I was, gonna ask that. was 38 acres. Really? That was underwater. My gosh. Yeah, that. Uh, and again, you, I know Charlie talked about this. Now, that water initially came from Pigeon Lake, is that correct? And some other springs? Uh, well, at one time, it was just the overflow of, of Pigeon Lake. Okay. But. Yeah. From springs all the way along, coming oh. over here, it got bigger and bigger. Really. And of course, eventually there also was another stream that joined uh, back here somewhere, mm -hmm. and that also uh, feeds into the Mimi Creek yet too. See, well. Okay. Then accordingly, the road is a little different than it is today. Uh, uh, the old road. Which was uh, called what again? That was the uh, Mimi. Uh, well, Mimi, Mimi Town Road. Okay. And uh, well, it's now known as as Highway X. Okay. But um, uh, uh, this here was the driveway that went up to the mill, and this is the section line. Sure. And, and the driveway that followed that line then goes right uh, down uh, past the the old home and. And, and uh, Henry's new house there, sure. and then you get out here on, on to X there. Okay, that black little uh, area here, is that the present house that we're in right now? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, that's the home right here. Yeah. Right now, okay, mm -hmm. all right, and then this road was diverted a little bit at the... Uh, y yes, uh, as the road went west here, then it took a little curve or, or a kink yeah. to the south, and then it came back again. All right, and, and ended up at uh, what uh, village up there? Uh, School Hill. Uh, All right. Over in this area. Sure. But then when they redid the road, then they, they went straight through here. All right. And so uh, this part was eliminated, but this road still connects here yet. Okay. Uh, that's One. Well, very good, Fritz. You, you've documented everything very well here, and. Uh, I'm surprised that the acreage that that mill pond accumulated, my gosh. And uh, like I said, you had 24 feet was the height of the dam? Yes, yes, that, that, that it drew at, wow. at the point of uh, where, the, where the wood part was or the structure sure. of it. Okay, yeah. very good, very good. Uh, excellent information, sir. I can, uh, later on, maybe when we're out yes. outside, I can show you where the ground, where they got it from what they used to build up the dam. Okay. Uh, that's still there yet, too. Very good. Thank you very much, Fritz. Sure. Very good now. Uh, Fritz, uh, he's going to be, he documented something. He'd like to read it off, please. Right ahead. The dam was started on level ground with timbers placed at different angles for to keep the dirt from shifting at the base. The wooden part of the dam was constructed of heavy planking and large poles upright and horizontal for bracing. In the middle of this area, there was were mason stone walls that were to hold uh, the base of the anchor uh, of the slanting poles that, that held uh, up against the, uh, the wood part of, of the dam itself. Okay. Um, the ground for the dam was taken from an adjacent hill and trucked over to the dam site. Okay. The carts were made to dump the ground, and the carts traveled on two metal rails, like a small railroad. Oh, really? Okay. And they were moved by hand and dumped when they reached a, a certain area. Okay. The, just north of the wood structure was a U-shaped area 
which served as an overflow. Although removable gates on, on the top of the wood structure could be lifted in event of heavy rains. Okay. And um, well, I just have here the first grist mill was built, or or the land I should say was, was first obtained by uh, F or J F Zins, and then sold to William Bits. Okay. And after a few years, then it was sold to August Callaway. Okay, very good. And uh, now here's a little uh, conflict here. Now it says Henry Callaway opened the mill for business in 1885. Um, and of course, then I just had a little bit about the insurance company that didn't want to pay for the uh, loss of the mill when it burned that time. But uh, Fred Langenhahn sued, and he uh, won. Okay. So, he, so he got his money. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay, well, thank you very much, Fred. Very good. Thank you. Speaking with Henry Langenhagen, and he has a little bit of uh, actual uh, archive <laughs> material here. Go right ahead, please. We had an old desk, and we were cleaning it out, and we came across an old ledger book here. We believe it was from the mill because the datement of the statement says it was 1866. Okay. And there's a lot of people, names in here that are familiar to the town. All right. And they were permanent customers, is that correct? I, I would say in behind each one, either they were, they bought the grain from them and their numbers are right in a row here. Okay. And as we go through, uh, you can tell the different colors of ink. Uh, ink, yeah. We got black there and we got blue here. Yes. And uh, there's more pages here with, with figures on. <laughs> and probably when they were paid, they got crossed, crossed off, off and yeah. kept on going. Okay. And uh, the penmanship was rather unique. They, they had very good. Yeah, I would say very good. You know, and here's more of it. I must, I just got to come in, if I can hold my camera with the focus on, I'm going to come in slow. But I have to agree, these people had penmanship that could beat the pants off of us nowadays. And, and it was no lines in here, and everyone is straight. Straight. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, my, my dad, the book was only half full. Okay. So he made it do. He just turned it, turned over, it over. And you had a, the other half here. <laughs> and uh, as people worked for him, he kept track of their wages. Uh huh. And I think he loaned them some money. Okay. And when he'd start the page, he'd say that they. Uh, uh, would have an amount here, uh, some of them $300 or $400. Okay. And as they worked their days or a week, then he'd put behind it how much was paid off. Uh huh. And as he got to the bottom of the page, yes. it, whether, whether it was a year or a couple of months, uh, as you can see, we start with May here on this one person here at John Feld. Yeah. And uh, then he'd end up, either it was he paid them out or the loan was paid. Uh -huh. And as we go through here, there's a lot of names that are familiar to the town. Correct. Right. Would you name are just a few? Uh, Adam Stein over here. And Otto Peckler, I'm not familiar with, but uh, as we go through here, here was Arthur Stein who lived down the road here on X. Okay. There was uh, uh, Lester Rick, okay. a name familiar. He was Elmer Sohn. So he, these people all worked for him then? They worked for my dad here. Oh, okay. Walter Steggy here. Oh my God, yeah. Yes, that, that name is familiar. Uh, even uh, his second wife, Walter's second wife, yes. uh, worked here a little bit, and that's probably where they met. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, it was always a mill, is that correct? Uh, no, at, at, one, at the point where my dad uh, had them as hired men, they worked as farm laborers. Okay. But my dad uh, had a herd of cows okay. and, and milked here. All right. Now, did your dad have anything to do with that mill as far as its function, or was that? No, that would be... 
Before his time, the only right. remembrance we have is he said he went swimming in the big mill pond. Oh, really? As a boy. Okay. They all knew how to swim. Oh. <laughs> very very good. Thank you very much, Henry. Goodness, you, you carried a heavy load for a ways here, huh? Just, just bring the coffee out once we, okay. I think after a lot of uh, <laughs> talking, My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> If I may have you introduce yourself, ma'am. I'm Dolores Crosley, Frederick Crosley's wife. Okay. You're a dead handsome man. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and she brought even goodies and coffee, my gosh, I guess. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And we're eating in a, a historical building besides. Yes, very historical, <laughs> very historical building. <laughs> very good, thank you so much. Who surprise us with uh, some coffee and uh, other goodies here, I guess, and she'd like to introduce herself one more time and indicate some information. Go right ahead, please. Okay. I was the former Dolores Walk. Okay. Lived in School Hill. All right. And um, uh, we uh, got married in May 12, 1956. Okay. We'll be celebrating our 48th. Wow. Wedding anniversary next wow. month. Oh, great, great. And um, I actually met him in Spring Valley at the tavern. My uncle had the tavern at oh, that time. Okay. Leslie Angel. Yes. I worked there, and that's where we met. Wow, isn't that nice? Wonderful. He oh. came in there for a, a cool one, and. Uh... <laughs> and, it all, <laughs> and it always was soda. <laughs> oh, drank. really? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, yes, that's yes. a nice story. I like that very okay. much. Okay. And you presently live, you used to live here in this home at all? For maybe a year. Okay. And then we built a the new home. home on the other side. Um, up, huh? up on the hill there, yeah. yes. Looks very nice, too. Yes. Well, thank you very and much. We have been friends with. Edward and Gladys had one for yeah. forever. Okay, very good. So. Thank, you, thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Got some pictures here. It's a different uh, copy, and I just want to make sure I got a stable picture. So go right ahead, Charlie. Yes, this is a picture of the, the Colway homestead and the and the mill. This is the homestead here. This is the building we're in right now. In fact, we're in the kitchen area of this particular building here. Okay, good. And Henry indicated earlier that the tall part had two chimneys, and here the picture does show that. Okay. And then the, the roadway came around here and behind the buildings, and then it would come back to this mill on this section over here. Okay, and this is the picture again of the mill? Of the grist mill, and, grist you, and, mill. and you can see that it's three stories high, two full okay. floors and a gable floor. Sure. And then here's the tail race where the water came out after it went through the turbine. Okay, very good. That's all I need, thank you. Yes, the, the picture I'm, that the camera's looking at right now, this is actually not a photograph. It's an artist's conception of what the, what the area looked like. And we're interested in this picket fence here. Okay, and I'll move up to the picture here that Henry is holding. Okay, this is the only picture we have. It, we're still debating whether it's my father or my grandfather on there, but you can see the picket fence along there. Okay. The, the house is the way the drawing looks. Uh huh. And uh, it's the only picture we have. Okay. Yeah, and you can also see the shutters on the house here and all the windows. It's pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> pretty neat. I'll just come right in. This, uh... Very good. Excellent. Thank you. For here, he's been uh, investigating and getting a few uh, copies of uh, unique information. Go right ahead, please. Well, I think maybe now in the, in the part of our taping here, we're going to kind of explain why we're how we got involved in this whole taping business okay. with the mail business. And Great. It happened, I don't know, must have been, what, seven, eight years ago by now, or even longer than that. I, I happened to build a 112 scale model of a grist mill with a water-powered wheel. Okay. And Fritz Krauss, and I displayed it out at the uh, Norheim Trashery out at uh, the Newton Fire Park there. And okay. And Fritzy Krauss happened to be out that, that was on Sunday, I believe mm -hmm. it was. Right. And he come over and he was looking at my model there, and then he told me that there used to be a grist mill in the backyard by Henry over here. Uh -huh. And I says, you mean that stone foundation? He says, yes. So that, that was my interest, and I drove past that for 30 years, and I never knew what it was, you know. <laughs> so I got the opportunity now, and we, we did a little research on a thing there. And, okay. And I talked to Fred a, a couple times on, on different occasions here to figure out what happened to the mill there. And he told me it always burned down. 
Okay. You know, so I says, well, you got some idea when? And he, he kind of told me maybe 1900 or something like that, you know. Uh -huh. So I told him I'd go to the newspapers, you know, at the Manitoba Public Library because they're in microfilm. Well, I spent three days there and I learned a whole lot, Jerry. <laughs> that, and, and I laid them out on the table here that okay. at that particular point in time, there were four English papers and two German papers being published in Manitowoc County. My goodness. <laughs> And we start off with the, the Manitowoc Daily Herald. Okay. Do you have a years on that this at all? This one is, is August 28, 1899. Okay. But they're all basically the same date because I, I, I tried to get the same date. All right. The next one is the Manitowoc Citizen. Okay. And this one I'm going to let Fritzy do. Uh, no, this is a German one. Just the way it would appear would be their northwestern. That would be the northwestern in English. Okay. And, and the next, the next one. It would be der Wahrheit, which would mean uh, this is is the truth. That's okay. what it means in English. All right, right. very good. And, and the next one is uh, the Manitowoc pilot. Pilot. All right. And then this one I don't have a front page of, but it was the, the Lakeshore Times, and this was the date here. Okay. And what date was that again? The same date? Or? Uh, this one is September 22nd, 1885. All right. And the article, what I was after, I was looking for the Colway name and, and all these articles. And this particular one here on page two, column five. All right. And, and that's the way I did the research. Page, okay. column by column. All right. Just one second, Charlie. Here that we're working with, and uh, Charlie's going to do some reading. Go right ahead, Charlie. Yeah, I'm not going to read much. But out of the Lakeshore Times is Mr. Henry Colway has his roller mill now complete and opened the mill last Monday. But... I still didn't find what I was looking for. I oh. wanted the big article, and I was thinking maybe a big front page spread where the mill burned down. Yeah. You know? And with these six newspapers there, I wasn't getting any place, you know. Okay. And um, I took a different tack on it. I talked to somebody up at the Historical Society, and they said they sent me to the courthouse. And then I asked for the old court records and that, and then they said, well, they're up in Green Bay. So that's where I went. And once I got to Green Bay, we found an old court document, a court brief, that was where August Colway sued the Mimi Mutual Home Protection, or the fire insurance company. Okay. And in there was the date of the fire. Okay. And I'm going to find that on here, and I can tell you when exact date that the mill burnt down. That was the 28th day of August in 1899. Oh is the date of the fire. Okay. And once I had this date, then I could go back to the library again, and then I knew which date I was looking for. And I did find the article in the newspaper, and it was only in one newspaper, and it was in the Manitowoc Pilot. Okay. And it was a weekly paper. Most of these were weekly papers. Oh, okay. You know, so you here we're on August 31st, and the fire was on the 28th, so it's oh. not the next day. But there was no big article in the paper, I was really surprised. <laughs> it was only a couple lines here. All right, if you want to read that off. And the headline for the thing is the Colway Mill Barns. And the, the reading goes, the Colway Flour Mill in Mimi was destroyed by fire on Friday night last. So it was a week back, right? When you say Friday night last. Mm -hmm. It is not known how the fire originated it was insured for $400. It is not known whether it was to be rebuilt. Okay. And apparently it was not rebuilt? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. All right. Very now, uh, there it didn't specify how the fire started. Now, Dad, I mean, what I recall him saying that lightning had hit the building. Oh. Okay. So, but okay. I just see now that this was not in this uh, it wasn't in the article, no. Okay. And your dad indicated, what, could you give us information about your dad as far as his name and so forth? Uh, the same as Henry. Well, well <laughs> it would, it would be Henry's <laughs> yeah. dad, too. He was my stepfather. Okay, and, I see. Uh, yeah, he, um, well, what should I say? We, <clears throat> we, we moved here in 1941, and, uh, of course, uh, we, well, I was in school yet, but we farmed and, uh -huh. and got cows and milk cows for quite a number of years and then of course after that uh, was it 1967 then then you started 65 or, or, or 65 65 yeah. okay then started in uh, with, with the dairying and uh -huh. 
So uh, he's been at it ever since. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> now the mill site out here, is, is there any uh, uh, millstones out there from the grist mill? No. No. no, 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 no nothing there. Nothing, nothing, nothing there. Nothing was in there. Yeah, okay. Not even when you were here. So no, 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 we no, didn't see nothing, nothing, nothing there. there. But okay. it started off as a grist mill, and then this paper article we read where he just converted everything over to a roller mill. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, right. and the biggest selling point of that, Jerry, was that once you could process your grain through a roller mill, you could say you had patented wheat flour, and you could that, that was the best flour made at that time. Oh, so okay. Mr. Colway, again, being on the cutting the edge. Cutting edge of the business the end of it, he knew where to sell and yeah. what, to get no. the, what to do to get it to sell. Very good. Thank you. Supervisor signing you out of line, so I don't want to see <laughs> <laughs> The uh, uh, Callway area here, and uh, Henry is explaining a little bit what, what was in this area where they're standing from an old picture and maybe where we're heading in a few minutes. Go right ahead. Okay, this, this, this is where in the artist's conception of the picture we had in the house before was the fence that leads us up the driveway past the house here and onto the grist mill. Okay. And that was that picket fence we saw in the pictures. Picket fence, right. Okay. So the knoll is still here, and that hasn't changed. And the, the home in the back has uh, been maintained very, very well. It's excellent shape. So we're very happy to have this on our videotape here. But uh, the Henry will lead us where we have to go. Go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you guys take off. We're on the northeast corner of the Callway home. And we'll be heading up to the Callway mill, grist mill, and rolling mill very shortly. And these other buildings were added on to the original Callway home. But the terrain to go through so we're going to be following our leader very closely and our objective of course is to get to the location of the foundation of the Callway Mill. Intending on walking up to the Callway Mill but on the way we found something. Go right ahead please. Okay this, this is our, what keeps our creek flowing here right down here to my right are some of the springs that feed the Mimi River. Oh the my gosh. The vegetation in there is watercress. Grows almost year round, but spring. Really? Out. It's an edible plant. Really? Oh, okay. Yes. And that's one of the many springs that you have on your farm and that yeah, fit. One of, that... one of probably 25 that we know of. <laughs> really? Wow. My wow. goodness. <laughs> Unbelievable. So as you follow along, we'll take you along to the creek area next. Very good. Thank you. Fritz here and he is indicating something he had indicated before but now we have the actual view. Go right ahead please. Uh, right here in front of me uh, is, is where the dam was started, the uh, ground was hauled in at the time and they had placed timbers uh, in different angles so that when the ground would be put on top it would uh, press them down and, and the ground would not move out. Okay. And way back there there's an old bus park Yes. But right behind that bus, there, there's a, a big cutout in that hill. Yes. And that ground was moved over here and filled this whole area in. As, as I go over to my right there, that all right. Uh, that was all put in to make uh, the dam. So the dam really was here? No. Uh, well, well, the dam was all the way along here. But, oh, it was. But, but the wood structure, what I spoke of, yeah. is over 
uh, to your right there yet, uh -oh. where there's a cut in the hill. You yes, I that? see that, yes. Yeah. The, uh, across the river there, that was the height of the dam. Okay. And that hasn't changed. Yet. All right. And, okay. And well, of course, here too, the, you can see how many years ago yeah. that has been because that tree was not there originally. All right. Yes, yes, okay. All right, that satisfies me on the location of that dam. Then. And this was the spillway of our that controlling? That was the spillway right there, yes. All right, very good. And we're looking to the northwest. Uh, northwest, yes. And of course, the other part of the dam, which was the solid part of the dam, was? The solid was all the way along. And, oh. and this here was cut down. Yeah. Now, just with maybe the last 10 years, uh, we had to have ground to fill in uh, here behind me. So. Uh, Okay. That's why that ground was used because we figured there'd never be a dam there. <laughs> right, right. Well, very yes. good. I thank you very much for it. That's very good information. Thank you. With the three gentlemen working here, and uh, uh, Fritz had provided some information, but uh, Henry will kind of finish it up for us. Go right ahead. Okay. If you pan over to the river now, okay, it's the Mimi River. Yes. And as you look to the west, you'll see in the middle of the river over there. Yes. A little green nodule, but underneath it is a original log yet from the dam. Okay. That, that dam was where those two earthen faces show on each side of the river there. Yeah. And that was what, 23 or 24 feet high. Okay. 24. 24, 24 feet. 24 feet of water was backed up behind that. Wow, that's hard to believe, huh? <laughs> and, and as you see, as you look over that way towards yeah. this cedar tree over there. Yes. The excess water came around and found its way back into the river. Oh, okay. No water ever came over the top of this dam. Oh, okay. So uh -huh. there was just a, a wooden structure, you said? A wooden structure? Yeah, yes. Although they did have some gates on top, though, when you got a real heavy rainfall that they could open it up here, too. Okay. But actually, most of the time, uh, it, it run around where the where the holding pond was there. All right. Uh, I mean, on, on average. Yeah. So oh. the, the, the spillway from the dam actually was just a, a nature-made one. It just kind of, when the water got to that level, it would just work yeah, around yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, come yeah. back yes. into the creek. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as we get up over the hill, we'll point that out. Okay, very good. Right. Thank you for the information. The name of this particular river? It's the Mimi River. Mimi River at this time. It into the pigeons. Okay. Way back then, we also, uh, I mean, as, as I knew it, this was, was called the Pigeon River. All right. And then somewhere along the line, they began calling it the Mimi Creek. So, okay. Uh, I guess, uh, but, I mean, as I knew it, though, way back, it, it was the Pigeon River. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Fritz here, and he's been uh, pretty knowledgeable as far as the waterways in this area. Go right ahead, please. Uh, we are now on the north end uh, of the dam structure okay. where um, where there is like a gully yes. that's parallel to the dam. Okay. And this was more or less uh, an overflow All right. when the water got high. All right. Instead of going over the wood structure of the dam, yes. it, it could come around on the side and it wouldn't be washing. Oh, okay. I did have to worry about it. Yeah. And uh, then if you pan a little bit over to your right. Okay. And about to the top of that hill over there. Yes. That's where the boathouse was. Okay. Right. Just well, that's green up there, but just where, where Charlie's walking, probably another uh, maybe 50 to 75 feet yes. beyond. Okay. Uh, that's. Uh, where the boathouse was. Okay, so the water was up that high that they could boat yeah. upon the the pond, if you will. Right, yeah. Okay. And then if you go over uh, to your right more yet. All right, and we'll do uh, that. That here was the holding pond. Oh. If you see the black down yes. there. Yeah. That was the holding pond. Okay, I'm going to walk up a little bit closer to that fence and get a better shot. Sure. Bauer, he's standing in a location. He'll indicate what that is. Yeah, I'm standing kind of on the northeast side. Sure, no, yeah. northwest, or, well, north. north, north yeah, yeah. North, yeah. Just, just north. Just north of the, the spillway here. And you can see where the water used to come through here. Yes. 
And uh, on the opposite side, again, the ground is just as high as I am over here. Okay. Even a little taller. Yes. But it's, it's so obvious that you can actually see where the water came through here years ago. Okay. And that again came from that mill pond that was backed up by the dam. Yes. That was, yeah. That was, that was the excess water that the dam didn't hold back. All right. The water ran around it. Okay. Like a spillway. Sure. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Charlie again on his property and he's going to show us something. Go right ahead, Henry. Okay. Uh, we were looking at the dam structure and the spillway. Yes. We're now looking at what was dammed up that was underwater. Okay. If you look to the west, you'll see the marshy area with the cattails. Right. The marsh grass. And as you look across, you'll see the pretty green over there. Yeah. That was not ours, that field. But the water came or went across to that point. All right. There was about 30 some acres underwater. 38. 38, 38 acres underwater. Acres. My God. This is just a small uh, part of it here. Yes. Yeah. But uh, you could see how how the, how deep it was here by looking down. Yeah. You, you probably had 10, 12 feet of water here. Now was this a sort of a natural uh, reservoir uh, situation here, right? Yes. They they used what. You know, once the dam was put in, yeah. they, they had that much uh, area to use water to run the mill. Okay, but uh, they didn't really have to do any total excavating or uh, getting building up anything. No, it was sort were, of the, the, natural. The, they just used the natural lay of the land. Okay, and, you know, very good. This is still low land today. Yes, yes. Okay, wonderful. Okay, it all starts to fall into place now. We see what's happening here. Fritzy was talking a little bit about a, a, a boathouse or something, Fritz? Yeah, yes, that was right in, in this area here. Okay. Uh, where we're standing uh, right now. As, as a matter of fact, it was right in front of us here. This, this okay. is where they, where they had a boathouse. All right. Okay. And uh, if you want to pan over t to your right. Sure, we can do that. Uh, up. There are two knolls over there. Yes. I, I don't know if you can get it on the neighbor's we'll there. It should over. be able to. Uh, unless you want to walk over there. I think and, I can get that. But uh, that was cut real deep. Okay. So then the water would come in over where, where this tree. Yes. Uh, just a little bit beyond that. And that was cut in and then the water would run into that holding pond there. Okay. That's oh. how the water got. Okay. I, I here's where I'm going to pan walk over. A little closer? We'll I'm going to I'm going to pan over now. This dark ground, Henry or Fritz, you want to take over? What? This is basically where that holding pond would be. Yes. Uh, and they had to keep the water level quite high though. Okay. Because otherwise they wouldn't get enough water in here. And there were times when the water was low. Yes. In the summer. They could only operate the mill for a, a couple of hours a day. Oh, okay. Uh, because they didn't have any auxiliary power at the time. Sure. But that and this, this here holding pond, was all pine trees years ago. Oh. And when they started to to clear that, yeah, uh, they did it after they got the water up so far that it was dammed up. Yeah. They went in the winter and they cut the trees off. <laughs> uh, Right at the ice level. Okay. <laughs> and that's how they got the trees out of there. Sure enough. <laughs> Boy, they were thinking all way ahead, everybody. <laughs> because we are still uh, working the land now. Okay. We are still hitting roots yet from ah, the trees. Yes, yes. So oh. that was, that was okay. quite, a, quite a thing. And yet yeah. uh, the water really never seeped away as, as black as the ground as you think. Yeah, you think it would. It would be porous, but yeah. it, it always held its, its height there. Very good. Well, thank you, Fritz. Henry here, we're standing in his uh, one of his fields here, and he'll indicate what we're doing here. Okay, we're, we're looking out to the west, and you can see down there where the marsh before, that was the water, that was the mill pond. Okay. And that was dammed up by the dam. Yes. And as you look down closer here, you'll see kind of a ravine as you're watching. All right. And this was a little deeper than it is now through the years with farming. All right. The ravine got filled in. Okay. But as you look off to the east now, you'll see where the water would have flown into this mill, the, to the holding pond. All right. And the, the black dirt is an indication that you had settlings. Sure. And now we're heading towards the, the mill. Okay. Very good. The, the western edge of the Henry's property here goes zigzag. 
Uh, Fritz here on the uh, sort of a higher ground, but he'll point out something from the mill pond. Go right ahead, Fritz. Uh, we are now on top of, of the mill on the north side where the road used to be. Okay. Still is yet. Yes. And to my left here, there was a, well, it, it wasn't a pipe. It was made out of wood. Okay. Uh, and that went underneath this driveway. And so the water from that holding pond or the mill pond there would come underneath this this road and okay. into the mill. All right. Here. All right. And it would fall. Uh, there was some indication that it went nearly 30 feet down. Oh, really? So, so that uh, created enough pressure oh, yes. that it, it would run the turbine. Okay, so it was sort of below water level by quite a bit. Is that correct? Well, I'd say down here probably about maybe four feet. Okay. Uh, that it, it was down. And, All right. And here, then it went into this uh, uh, mill area. All right. And the road we're standing on, Fritz, is the same approximate original road too? Yes. Yeah, the same, same road. Okay. Very good. Yeah, the, the, the inlet flume or that, that spillway that came into the mill, that would have to have been more in the pond, like you said, about yeah. four feet, because yeah. if you use that much water out during the day and you you don't use the mill at night, the pond had a chance to replenish itself. Okay, bring it, you know, bring it up again. Like filling its tank with right. gas again. So there it. must have been some sort of a gate uh, construction to yes. allow so much water to come through. They did have a gate, I'm not sure just where it was, but uh, Dad was always a little frightened. He was uh, a very thin person in his younger days, and he was the only one that could call inside of the turbine and clean out the fish <laughs> and the wood pieces and there's always some water was coming and he often wondered what would happen if something would go wrong and the full force of the water would come. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. And afterwards we'll be looking at a uh, part of the turbine Okay. To be able to see the opening where he had to crawl through. All right, very good Fritz, thank you. We're here and he's going to give us a little more information. Go right ahead. Okay, we're on the north wall of the whole mill side here. If you look down here to my right, okay. part of the foundation is still here. Yes. Today, and uh, this is deteriorated, but as you pan down here and look, you can see where the water came through. Okay. And then as we look again back to the north, you can see the bottom of that black ground there. We're about 45 feet above that. Okay. So that, that was the water store. All right. Okay. And uh, the walls that are in back of you, uh, that's pointing to what, the way? That would be the west wall over there. All right. Fairly intact yet. And you look over that way is the south wall. All right. And uh, the east wall is pretty well deteriorated. Yes, I see that. Okay. I'm going to put Henry in a spot here, Jerry. I'm just Go. wondering, do you have any idea what the dimensions of the building was? was it not, not really, but uh, I would say you're looking at about a 40 by... 30 foot structure. Something like that. No. Okay. It's about 40 feet long and 30 feet wide. Okay. Could you also just roughly guess how thick those walls of stone and mortar were? Oh, they're, they're usually about uh, 30 inches or 3 feet thick. Okay. You know. All right. Okay. And it's all strictly stone and mortar. Is that correct? Yeah. Strictly stone. Yeah. All right. Very few bricks. Okay. Very good. And again, the water would have come in here and would have exited through some kind of a turbine, is that correct? The, the turbine was what drove the mill apparatus or machinery. Okay. And if, you, if you're looking there, you're looking out to the south. Yes. And there the water exited. Okay. And went down into that uh, kind of a spillway there. That yes. You can see the cattails growing and they lead right over to the Nini River. Oh, oh. yeah, the, the river just comes right back yeah. around. Right back in there on that curve. Back to where here and we're standing on the north end of the building that was here. And, and go right ahead, Henry. As you look down with the camera, <laughs> you can see the where the depth is, where the water uh, ran the machinery. Yeah. And then you can see where the water exited probably. Right. And down there you can see the cattails. Yeah. And as the cattails, you, you follow that, it'll yeah. lead you right back to the Mimi River again. Oh, okay. So, so the water just diverted its course a sure. little and... And went through the building. Went through the building and back out. Okay. And again, 
That was a, a, did you know anything about the turbine itself at all? Uh, we have uh, half of the turbine left. That okay. was one of the housing units of it. Oh, all right. That's still on the farm today. Okay. You have it in your buildings on the farm or here? Uh, I have it uh, at home up against the building there. Okay, we'll take a look at that too. Okay. That'd be nice to see. I'm so happy that you kept that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good, Henry. We're again looking at the uh, uh, river out in the background where the water that was run through the turbine ended up. And I'm going to pan back here and we've got a historical site here at this time. And it's the wall, the west wall of the mill from the Colway uh, mill and we've got some people who can give us more information about this uh, certain area. Go right ahead please. Uh, to my right here is, is a door opening for the lower level. This is where, where they go into uh, and uh, I'm not sure just what was all in this first room here. There was a division inside but uh, that inner wall is gone now. Okay. So I'm not sure just what the what the house in here. Probably some of the machinery that is uh, mine shafts and such. Sure. To, uh, well, you know for a fact, I guess that the turbine would have been down there. The, the turbine would have been directly on the with, behind me, uh, but on the other side of the building. Oh, all right, very good. That's that's where it was. Uh, Okay, and Henry, uh, the height of the wall as we see it right now, uh, give us an estimate of the height that you're standing at, and is that the top area where the wooden structure would be mounted to? Yes, that would be, th this wall is pretty well intact with the height. Okay. I would say she's a good maybe 15, yeah. 15 to 18 feet tall in the corner there. Okay. And uh, she's still uh, probably intact of what she was when, when the mill was going. Okay. All right. Very good. And part of the north wall is still sitting there also. Fritz and Henry here and we're on the, you can indicate what side of the building we're on now. Okay, we're on the south side now. Okay. And uh, you can see still she's, the corner is pretty well intact. Here. Yeah. And the uh, stonework is pretty amazing that yeah. for over a hundred years she stood. Yeah. And, uh, as, as you can see, the, the size of the stones here are some pretty big ones. That would be a cornerstone, if I'm correct this there? This is a cornerstone down here, and this one here is much smaller. Uh -huh. go up, uh, there's some pretty good yes. work. Yes, right, right. Okay, this would almost be 150 years old, is that yes. right? Yes. Okay. And this is probably a window at one time? Yeah, that was a window. If, if you probably looked in the... So we had the artist drawing there. Yes. They, they pretty well line up to what the actual uh, mill looked like. Okay, okay. And if you notice the brick that are used yes. to fill in voids here yes. is identical to the brick used on the house. Ah, okay. So would that maybe indicate they had leftover brick and the house is built before the mill? Would that be a well, assumption? Well, uh, very... Uh, I would say it'd be very possible because I don't think they would have purchased brick just for this. Uh, just for the fill in voids on, on right. this wall here. Right. Okay. So, so under the assumption that, that the house was probably put up before the mill. Okay, very good. Thank you, Fritz. Uh, Mr. Charlie Bauer who's with us had pointed out this would be a good idea to see the thickness of the wall that was mortared together here with bricks and stone. And uh, Fritz, you can indicate how, how, is that a arm's length or better, huh? I got a, a tape here, I'm going to measure it. One oh, time. wonderful. <laughs> Fritz has got a tape measure with him already. Uh, this here w would be a 30 inch wall. 30 inch wall. Wall. A lot of beef. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of beef. Okay, Fritz, I'm going to ask you if you would uh, to indicate what you uh, have over here. Uh, some modernization took place and that type of thing, so if you'd indicate that, please. In order that they could continue using the mill the year round and not worry that when the water level got low that they had to shut down, they, they had an engine. I'm not sure, it might have been a gasoline already at that time. And that was mounted right here. Okay. These bolts ah. uh, held the engine down. All right. And this area here was under a roof too. You see that there's a wall. Yes, I do. It goes all the way around. 
Okay. So this one, I mean, was inside here too. All right. Okay, we see some remnants of stones and everything that was part of a foundation. What size area are we really standing in right now, Fritz, roughly? Well, I'd say this had to be at least 30 going out to where... Okay, we're uh, Charlie and... Uh, and the other way. Yeah, I'm, on the, I'm at the corner stone here. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to hold it right here. That's Fritz uh, for a dimension on this other area there that we see a little bit of the foundation remaining. And uh, there's certain gentlemen that are helping us out with the corners. Could you give us something there, Fritz? Yes. Um, if you uh, look over to the far corner there, yeah. uh, and then you, if you pan over a little to your left, you'll see the, uh, the two corners of this building that was added on uh, to the mill. Okay. Uh, probably in, in a few years after it was put up. Okay. Uh, for the, to uh, put the engine inside. Yes. And uh, I'd say that's probably, the dimensions could be probably 30 by probably 24 okay. feet, something like that. All right. Okay. And uh, was that a wood portion that was built at that time totally, or how was that? Well, I'm not real sure. We do not have a photo or, or a picture, I should say, of this that was added on so we just have to assume okay that it, and having the stone foundation on there it, it, it probably was uh, maybe as high as what what the existing building was okay that's fine very good can picture back to the north where the water came in and entered the building to run the turbine and then exited in the flue out of the building and you can see the the ditch still there, or the low area, and headed out, and the green crest or edge would show up as the channel and ended out into the creek one more time, or the stream. Fritz here on the, what side of the wall are we on at this time? Uh, we're on the south side yet. Okay. And this, we're gonna look down to where the water exited out of the mill. All right. And as youngsters, I, I played on it and Frederick did too. Okay. And it was kind of like an arch where okay. water exited out under All right. the mill. And uh, through time though now, the frost and weather, sure. it's caved in, but you can still see where, where we had okay. the water exiting. And yes. Okay, and we do have a picture or artist's conception and it shows that particular Piece. Opening is yes. that correct? It shows the, the opening where the water came through on the sketch. Okay, very good. Very good. Thank you very much. We're gonna pinpoint a little bit more in timeline what they had indicated before about playing in this area. Go right ahead, please. Uh, this could have been back about 1942, 43. Okay. And uh, we used to play around at this site here quite a bit uh, as, as kids and. And I was remembering that uh, the area down here where that half moon uh, was uh, into the wall here where, where the water exited, that yeah. was, it was just, we could, we could crawl into it and then come up inside again. And okay. <laughs> it was, was kind of neat. <laughs> and Henry, you remember that also? How old were you when you did yeah, that? I was probably be about uh, nine or ten years old. Okay. And uh, it was still there yet at that time. Okay. <laughs> You could see the cracks were starting to form in there. Sure. I guess our, our mother worried that we'd get crushed. Yeah. We shouldn't play by it. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You never know when it's going to happen. <laughs> okay. Well, very good. Uh, Charlie, anything you want to add here? Well, I can't think of anything right offhand, but it's this is quite a quite a building here. Yeah. A lot of history here. Okay. And uh, now there was it was not a residence in here at all. It was strictly no, no, a mill. It was strictly a business. Strictly okay. A business. All right. A little corner office maybe was there to sure. you know, keep the ledger. Okay. And his residence again. He had to walk from here, or whatever, and he had to go way up to his home. Over there. Over there. And uh, distance-wise, what are we looking at? About 500 feet, 600 feet. Maybe more than that, huh? Oh, I'd say a good 600 feet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You, you probably took a horse, though. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That is the Colway home. And this are the silos and barns and granaries.
that are presently here with sheds, machine sheds, presently. And we're now going to be heading back uh, from the actual Callway Dam, Callway Mill, I should say. And we do thank Fritz Krauss and Henry Langenhan for adding so much to our information on this particular unique historical building. Coming uh, now to the end of our information, but there's one thing, a question came about what happened to the dam, and Fritz can maybe give us that, please. Go right ahead. After the dam burned in 1899, uh, shortly after, we don't know if it was weeks or months, but uh, Fred Langenhan decided that he didn't want to keep up the dam anymore since the mill was gone. Okay. And he began opening up the gates on, on the wood structure of it and, okay. and kept doing that. It took two weeks to get all the water down all right. because he did not want to flood uh, people downstream. Right, right. So uh, well, that's, well, that's how it came about then that they uh, lowered the water. And the reason again was because the original mill had a fire and you indicated about from a lightning, is that correct? Well, that's what Dad had mentioned that time, I mean, years ago, he said that lightning had hit the building and, okay. and uh, well, it, it was in August, so I guess you figure you got storms uh, in oh, the summer sure. too that, sure, uh, that sure. could cause that. Okay. So that's uh, All right. what I feel had happened to it, that, that it was not any oh. other so, source of Sure. Okay, very good, Fritz. Thank you. And we're going to now, I guess, look at part of the turbine. We'll be interested in looking at that. Thank you, Fritz. Sure. We're good enough to be with us all morning and all afternoon already, I believe. And we're at a location on uh, Henry Langenhans' farm, and there's uh, a portion of a historic uh, piece of equipment here. And Mr. Bauer will start us out. Go right ahead, please. Yes, before we get to this piece of iron here, we're going to talk a little bit about water wheels. Okay. And there were basically three kinds of water wheel. And we're going to start with the, the undershot. Okay. And the undershot wheel had great big wide paddles. All right. And the, and the water was confined to a small area and it went under the wheel. All right. And it was just the force of the running water that made the wheel turn. All right. It didn't produce very much power. All right. Then, and, but you didn't need any high dam or anything. You could just mount the mill any place you wanted. All right. The other one was the overshot. Okay. And that's where the water came over the top and entered the wheel probably at, at noon. Mm -hmm. And that filled either a trough or a bucket. Okay. And the, as the wheel turned around, right, first I should say the undershot wheel ran counterclockwise. Yes. The overshot ran clockwise. I see. And the water come over the, and when the buckets filled up the water would turn the wheel and when the wheel got about 3, 3.30 most of the water would be out. Okay. And the, the disadvantage with the overshot is it dumped the water by the wheel and caused a drag on the wheel. Ah. You didn't have that problem with the undershot. Ah. Now, the, the most efficient one was the breast shot. Okay. And that, and that wheel they made a lot wider. That could be seven, eight feet wide. And All right. again, had buckets or troughs on there. Yes. And that water entered at about nine o'clock in the morning. All right. And that wheel went counterclockwise. Okay. That wheel went, it took the water and the wheel went reverse. Okay. So when it unloaded the water, there was no drag because the water was going the same All way. All the same direction. Right. Oh, and right. These were the three basic water wheels and then we come to this piece of iron here which is part of a turbine and it was sometimes called the tub wheel. Okay. And these guys are going to explain all about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll start with this gentleman. Fritz, go right ahead. Okay, uh, this here is just half of, of the housing of, of the turbine. Okay. And uh, we're really not sure what the inside, as far as where the water would come down and, and hit the paddles, but uh, we're, we're just uh, assuming that this was the top of it and uh, water went out uh, on that end there. Okay. And over here, there were two clean-out holes. This All one right. still has the uh, bolt in yet with, with the anchor. And, okay. And that side is open. And okay. This is where uh, Dad, when he was a little kid, he had to 
crawl in here, they, they would turn the water off uh, on top of the where it, where it entered the mill. Yes. And he'd have to crawl in there. You're kidding. And take out fish, wood pieces, whatever uh, debris was in there that would cause uh, problems that the, that the turbine wouldn't function right. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, so. Uh, Boy, to be entrapped in there, I don't know. Yeah, he, he, he said it was <laughs> always scary. Oh. Oh. And of course, if you figure how, how large this was, yeah. if you put another half to this one, yeah. uh, I mean, there was quite an area that he had to clean out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And your dad had to do this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that was when it was up at the, the mill, yeah? Yeah, when it was installed at the mill. Yeah. Okay. That's right. And again, we are looking only at sort of the, we'll say, assume it's the top half. And there was another approximate same other opposite half we feel and there was a mating rim and they bolted this together when they assembled it mm -hmm. okay very good anybody else can add something henry now, now we'll go on and look at a spring that fed our, our mill okay very good we'll be looking forward to that thank you looking at the callway foundation the original mill and we're now in an area where we would have been standing in the backed up water and the gentlemen are standing where maybe the original dam was placed across this area to keep the water backed up and generate a right through here, right through here huh yeah. okay yeah. if you just line this up here all right kind of, if you look at that earth embankment there yes it comes all this way right right up to the area we're standing okay very good okay thank you faded right out the Pretty soon, then, then they this was the height of the dam here. It's about 20 some feet. On a path to see some uh, other unique thing, but in, as we walked, Fritz remembered something. Go right ahead, Fritz. Uh, years ago, when uh, Dad was a young boy, and the mill pond was was all in place yet, they had a favorite diving point, a huge rock just up to my right here. And uh, that's where they jump off into the pond. Oh, for that's gosh sake. Their favorite spot there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what do we got here, Charlie? Well, we're looking at one of the springs that, that uh, feed the, the creek here. Yes. And uh, it's just amazing how it just bubbles out of the ground here. And how long was this here, Henry, that you know? This has been here forever. forever. As, long, as long as I know. And so, Frederick, uh, it, it's here 50 years plus. And that's water mixing with that sand a little bit. It's coming out well, of the ground. The water's pushing the sand up. Yeah. Oh my God! The water has that much pressure. So this, this, and I'm this just going to pan Valley. back here. <laughs> <laughs> and we're standing at the very edge of this creek, and uh, Fritz is good enough to be hanging onto my body, <laughs> so I don't take a, a drink here. <laughs> a final battery power, but we got the three gentlemen here that are very. Uh, put a lot of effort into put, giving us so much information and I'd like to start with the owner if you can uh, give us his goodbye and whatever he wants to say. Well, I'd like to thank you for filming here today and we hope you got some useful information about the mill and the old house and uh, even the river here. Okay. And thank you again. Very good. Thank you Henry. And you sir? I want to say thank you also for, for helping us out to preserve our, our heritage here and maybe for many years to come. Very good. Very good. Thanks, Fritz. And you, sir? I'm Charlie Bauer, and I want to thank both of these gentlemen here, Henry Longahan and Fritzy Krause, for giving us the personal guided tour of this <laughs> historical site down here. Just, I was just tickled pink, Jerry. Yes, to see so many things and to hear the good stories and the actual stories, which is really great. I thank you also, gentlemen. And I'm going to put a date on this, baby. And it's again April 22nd, 2004. By golly, it's 1.30 in the afternoon. We've been at it a while. <laughs> and also, I'd like to thank for the fine lunch that was presented to us today. Uh, we appreciated that. We'd have, been, we'd have been kind of dragging our butts by now. <laughs> thank you again, fellas. Sure. The tape here, and Fritz has a story about a, a neighbor or a friend that came every so often. Go right ahead. Uh, in the spring of the year, probably back around the turn of the century, when the mill pond was still intact yet, or it had to be before the turn of the century because anyway, an Indian would come in the spring of the year, no one knew where he came from, okay. and he would camp up in the woods right where I'm looking at right now, Okay. 
and he had a little money, he would go up to the grist mill, and he'd buy some flour, and he, he would live off the land. He ate fish and he uh, shot uh, other animals. Okay. And in the fall of the year, he'd leave, no one knew where he went. And oh. he did that for quite a number of years. Holy cow. And his name was what? Long John. Long John. Well, this is a very fine story, Fritz, and the battery's flashing at me, so you made it in time. Thank you. Look at that. <laughs> okay, I'm with uh, Mr. Charlie Bauer, and it's a Tuesday morning, and we've reviewed a few things, and Charlie can indicate why we're taping here this morning. Go right ahead, please. <laughs> yes, good morning. Uh, in our earlier taping of the Colway grist mill on the 22nd, we had an opportunity since that time to review the tape. And I can't believe my major blunder I had on the beginning of the tape there. I know it's Mimi Creek people. <laughs> and uh, in my, my preparation for the tour of the, the grist mill and that, I did some preliminary reading. And I, Dr. Lewis Foggy, on his account of the history of Manitowoc, which was it's in a two volume issue that was published in 1912, and then again, in this particular article here on Osmond, the heart of the Irish Mimi, written by Francis, or Reverend Francis Rose, he, he comes across the name Mimi and he explains okay. how, how Mimi gets mixed up with, with pigeon. And I, I'm just gonna read what Father Rose wrote here, and it says, the name Mimi donates pigeon in the Chippewa Ojibwa Indian language. Tradition has it that at one time the area was practically overrun by pigeons and the Indians took the name from the sound that they made. So, and also in, in my studying, I should say for this, that I believe that Mimi River at one time was called Pigeon River, that because Mimi River is a branch of the Pigeon River. Okay. And, uh, we have a map here okay. where, where, the, where they show us uh, that, uh, that Mimi Creek, I should call okay, it. Or the locals right. call it Mimi Creek, so we're just going to call it Mimi Creek. All right, that's fine. And the map shows that the origin is up around Pigeon Lake here. Okay. And it just kind of winds on down. And then this area right here, this is County Trunk X. Okay. And this is where the, the grist mill was located. You can see this is Russ Road right here. All right. So that mill was like right in here someplace. Mm -hmm. And then this particular Mimi Creek here followed down and then in through Spring Valley where, where the same water ran the Disciple Sawmill. Okay. And it just, it just follows on, crosses 42 here, winds on down. And it does eventually join up with Pigeon River down in the town of Edwards in Sheboygan County, and, and then it flows on out to Lake Michigan. Okay. So I know it was Mimi Creek. I, I just got so confused on that that day with all the information that we had available to us. Okay. Um, uh, where are we gonna go from here, Jerry? Okay, I think we'll cut and take a little look, all right? Sure. Charlie, would you like to explain some uh, things on the map here that are important? Um, if we're looking here, this is Highway X. And we talked earlier that Highway X ran all the way to Lake Michigan. And you can see that on a map here. It, it was a straight road, and it went past the front of the grist mill, it went up the school hill, and just continued west. Okay. All right. Well, oh, you're very good. And this is, this, is a, this is a current map of the area. Okay. We have a, a plat map of 1872, okay. which, which shows the two different piers at the end of County X. Very good, thank and you. And I think we're gonna focus on that now. Very good. Okay, Mr. Bauer has another map, as he mentioned earlier, and this is Centerville, is that correct? This is a, a map of Centerville, and the reason I'm using Centerville here, and it's a plat map of 1872. Okay, let and me just, where's that date here, Charlie? I wrote that here. Okay. Very good, okay, and continue and, please. And then this is County Trunk X. Okay. I couldn't find a name what they called it before that. And, okay. and from here you go into the town of Mimi and past the grist mill. Okay, and we're going uh, to the east now, is that correct? This way, this way is east, yes. We, we follow east. 
And we talked earlier about how important this particular road was. And when we get down to the lake area here, you can see the, the two piers. And these piers, you can see they start out small, but there was a big enough area for a team of horses and a wagon to actually turn around there. Mm -hmm. and, and this particular book here shows that it was a, the ro one of these was the, the Rosberg Pier. Okay. And then in, in 1878, they, they just show one pier. This pier disappears. Oh. And, and, and I, the way I figured that, in 1873, the railroad came through here. Okay. So some of the freight start moving by rail, so there wasn't a need for the piers. All right. And this particular road here, uh, on a different plat maps, they, they show hotels were built on this particular road, and there was there was one up by Highway 42 okay. and County Trunk X. Wow. So, so that, uh, Pauly Grohl lived in that area? Pauly Grohl would live in that area, yes, yes. Oh, yes. doggone. Okay, and uh, the reason for the... Uh, the uh, piers was what again? I, I believe it was to, once you had your grain mill, you, you could take your stuff and, and sell it there. And it also had when the immigrants came in, the, the German influx of the Germans came in. Okay, that was with for schooners then. Is that schooners, correct? yes, the sailing ships. All yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. A lot of them came through the Great Lakes and, and come up the, the east coast of Lake Michigan. Here. Okay. All right. And, and with the schooner traffic, and in one of the newspaper articles I read, they always listed the ships that were in dock at different docks in Manitowoc. All right. So you, if you were expecting some particular freight on such a such a such a ship, you know when it was going to be in, in at the dock. Okay. And you could pick it up. All right. And they sold their grain and they sold their their lumber supplies. Okay. And and I suppose when they ordered something like when Mr. Colway uh, redid his mill and put the roller mill in now, I don't know if that particular roller mill came by freight uh, on the rail or if it came up by schooner. All right, very good. And speaking of that, I think we'll head over to that area also for information. Sure. Thank you, Charlie. There's uh, put together a, sort of a sketch, but it really tells the tale. Go right ahead, please. With, with the information I got from Henry Long and Hahn and Fritzy Krauss, what, what I drew up is the way they kind of explain how the mill was arranged. And uh, I think we're gonna start, we're gonna start right up here. And this up here is north. And the water flowed into this big giant reservoir. And the water came from where, Charlie? The, the water was was came from the Mimi River, but it originated up at Pigeon Lake. But it's spring fed. Henry says there's at least 25 springs that he know that he knows of on his particular property. Okay. And, and they fed into this big reservoir, okay. and this reservoir was about 38 acres, so Correct. it was a large reservoir. Very good. And yeah. and what they did, they built a earthen dam. This here is all earth here. Okay. And this is earth around here, yep. And this the center part in here, according to, to Fritz's uh, recollection, was the wooden structure of the dam there. Okay. And that, that was done with cross timbers and poles and heavy planking and that. And on the very top of this, there was floodgate planks that could re be removed in, in, a, in, a, in a torrential downpour if it had to be. All right. And then back in this area over here was the, a, a natural spillway. So when the water got so high, it would come out of, out of the, the reservoir dam back here and move this way, and it would flow back down to the Mimi River. Mm -hmm. Now, as we come back in between the spillway, and I'm gonna call this back here the feeder channel, this is where Fritz indicated there was a boathouse where they had boats and they, they could use that to go fishing in this particular reservoir up here. Okay. The water flowed from this, the reservoir through this feeder channel here, and that was a carved channel, and that flowed into this big giant mill pond, and that was a big area. Mm -hmm. And it held a lot of water. And uh, once it got here, there was a, a channel that was made out of wood that went under the road, and then, it, from there, it entered the mill. Mm -hmm. And once it entered the mill, it went through the turbine, and then it exited the mill through an arch opening. Okay. And then the tail race here came back and joined up with Mimi River. Okay. And he, this here is County Trunk X here. Okay. Going east and west. East and west. Okay. And then this would have been the, the driveway comes in here, and this would have been the, the, the fancy Colway home is here. Okay. And 
for, for people to get back to the mill, they had to cross this bridge, and that bridge is still there today. Okay. And they came up here, and there were, must have been a turnaround area if they had wagons or whatever to turn around with their grain wagons and that. Mm -hmm. But this is where the mill is situated up here. Oh, okay. And uh, the, ridge, the mill originally started off as a grist mill with, mm -hmm. with stones, and in the newspaper articles we, we read, it went to a roller mill, and it was run by a turbine. Okay. And we're going to get into that a little bit now. Very good. Thank you, Charlie. With uh, Charlie Bauer, and we've got a simulation picture, if you will, of a turbine. Charlie will explain it. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we seen the, the turbine over in Henry's farm there, and what we seen was half of it. And this is one similar to that. This is the only picture I could find where, where it actually showed a metal turbine. And the part we seen, this was open here, the yeah. one on the farm. Yep. And then we seen half of this here. Correct. We saw sort of like what we think is the top half. The top half, yes. And and it was made that way because it had this water wheel inside. Mm -hmm. So this had to be unbolted to get the wheel in and out. Okay. And the water entered through this opening. Okay. It, it didn't enter in the top. This was a vertical shaft. Okay. And one thing I want to point out, as soon as I seen this picture, the first thing that came to mind was the, the clean-out holes that Fritzy was talking about, and they show that on here, mm -hmm. that where, where they went inside.